Buzzard overhead. Another In close. One. Get your cameras. Oh. Yay! Thank you, Buzz. All right. How's that? We deliver, huh? There we go. Watch for the V in the wings when he when he glides. Very nice. Boy, that was that was classy. 9:05, our first official buzzard of spring here at Hankley Reservation in Cleveland Metro Parks, and more to come, I'm sure. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. As soon as it warms up, uh, they'll be uh, no doubt more active. Now, where there's one, there's more, right? Yes. Okay. I'm Bob Hinkle. I'm Chief of Outdoor Education for Cleveland Metro Parks. I've been Chief Naturalist for 27 years. Well, this is the legendary uh, best sighting spot for the buzzards of Hinkley that uh, return on March 15th every year. Um, they actually uh, nest a, about a mile and a half from here in the rock ledges uh, that are really quite uh, a, a rare geologic formation in this part of uh, Ohio. Well, there's several different uh, stories in, uh, in folklore, but uh, in reality, uh, one that we can trace back uh, through history is the Great Hinkley Hunt of uh, 1814. The early settlers here, once they begin to establish themselves in the rich farmland that, that is Hinkley Township, uh, decided that they were losing too many of their livestock to uh, those predators, varmints as they called them, and that it was time to rid the township of the varmints. So on Christmas Eve of that year, they gathered every man and boy in the in the township and surrounded the township in a big square, uh, armed with clubs and guns. And uh, when the uh, horn was tooted and the sound passed all around the square, uh, the men and boys began to walk toward the center of the township. As they did, they drove ahead of them all of the, the varmints, uh, as well as other game animals like deer and turkey and so forth, uh, and killed them as they went. Being that it was Christmas Eve and winter and cold, um, the uh, settlers took the best parts of the game animals that left the carcasses of the predators and within a matter of, uh, of a few hours they were frozen. One second here, I've got a sighting of something, probably a crow. Crow, okay. Crow at a distance there. Only when spring came and things unthawed, uh, it supposedly attracted large numbers of buzzards to clean up after the, the Great Hinkley Hunt. And then, supposedly, the buzzards have been coming back ever since. Uh, good story. Um, the Hinkley Hunt happened. We know that. We've got journals. We know there was a big mess in the spring when everything unthawed. The buzzards come back for the, for the great roosting places, the very rare rock ledges, um, rather than looking for the sh winter smorgasbord of their great, 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 great grandfathers. Why do I do this? Um, it's a celebration of spring. Uh, people are excited. I love to to uh, share my natural history knowledge with folks that, uh, that come out and, and wonder about things that are happening in the outdoors. And people get excited. It's kind of a, of a fun folk festival, I think. Puxatawney Phil gets, gets pretty good press, and so, does, uh, does, so do the buzzards of Hinkley. Um, I like to think that uh, the buzzards bring spring back with them, at least in Northeast Ohio. Uh, I always thought it unfortunate that, that people all over the uh, United States place such great faith on one, one groundhog in, uh, in Pennsylvania. Um, I'm sure Phil's accurate for his region, but not at all for uh, the rest of the country. When the buzzards come back, spring comes with them. And that's been both legend and fact for years and years and years.